Okay. Hey guys, it's Phantom, and welcome back, or welcome to the Ask Phantom podcast. Um, we're on episode 13. It's cra- It's crazy to say that we're on episode 13, and I've been doing this podcast for about, like, three months now? Over three months, I think? Um, yeah. I've been doing this podcast for, like, over three months now. And it's crazy to think we're already on episode number 13. So, again with the, like, techie theme of episodes. Um, like, you know, the whole tech, the whole tech episode stuff. And then once the tech episode stuff is over, we're gonna, you know, get back into our regular episodes. So, um, it is currently almost noon, actually. I woke up several hours ago, but I wasn't feeling great, so I waited um, several hours to get this done. Currently, I am, as I said, you know, in the process of setting everything up for my compu- for my um, new computer. Coming in probably maybe a month to a couple weeks. I don't know, but it, it depends. It depends on how long this takes. So, today's episode is going to be tips that you probably didn't know about owning a PC. So, okay. So, as you guys know, as I've said, you guys probably remember this. But it took me several months to, like, I mean several months. Okay, a little bit of backtrack here. Um, I actually started looking into PCs two years ago, but I didn't get one until now because I didn't need one yet. (laughs) Um, Let let me just say that. And for any of you wondering, um, the computer that I currently have now is, like, I think five years old. Um... Yeah, so it's it's time for an upgrade, y'all. It is time it is time for an upgrade and I am ready for it. So, tips on owning a PC. If you're wondering, I haven't owned a PC in gosh, like 14, almost 15 years. Um So, yeah. I'm I'm learning all I'm learning all that I can about, like, the Windows operating system, because if you guys are wondering, I love Microsoft, um, I love Windows, and everything, you know, so, here's some tips. So, one tip, or one thing that you should do is, okay, never, okay, never ever put your CPU case or, you know, never ever put your CPU on the floor. Never. Don't ever do that. Why? Because PCs can catch on fire. If you guys didn't know that, PCs literally can catch fire. Do not put your CPU on the floor. Um, I would recommend putting it on the desk, or if you don't want to put it on the desk, get a wall mount, um, get a desk wall mount to put under your desk. Um, I totally recommend this if you have, like, it, or if you want, like, those wall mount desks, you can just get, like, a wall mount. Um, I actually do want a wall mount desk because I don't want, because, you know, I don't want, like, I don't want to, like, bump into my desk every time I sit down, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah. Oh, and I'm currently getting I'm currently getting a chair right now. Um, you know, like I'm literally getting a gaming chair right now. Um, I do I do recommend gaming chairs because they are so comfortable. Okay, even though I've never had one, even though I've never legit had a gaming chair, they are so comfortable for you. They're so comfortable, they are so worth it. Trust me. Um, gaming chairs are so worth it, you guys. So, um, I mean, you can get gaming chairs pretty much anywhere. Um, I know, like, you can get scent gaming chairs, um, you know, if you're a sponsor for a company. For example, like, G Fuel. 
or gaming or gamer fuel. Um, and stuff, you know, they send, they can send you gaming chairs, you can buy one, um, but yeah, you have to be a sponsor, and it takes quite a long time if you're trying to, like, build up your YouTube channel and stuff, but, um, I'll, I'll tell you how to, like, grow, I'll tell you how to, like, grow your channel and stuff in a separate episode, but this is about, like, techie, this is about techie stuff, this is about nerdy stuff, so, yeah, keep your, keep your CPU off the ground at all costs. Why? Because there is actually a lot of risks to putting your PC on the floor. There are so many risks. Like, let's say if you have, let's say if you have carpet, you know, if your floors are carpeted and you put your PC in your bedroom and you decide, oh, I'm going to put this, oh, I'm going to put this on the floor, you know? It will, it will, um, catch lint, um, and stuff like that, which is really bad, especially if you don't clean it out. It has to be cleaned out, um, regularly. I'm probably gonna go with, like, every month. So, like, you know, you have to, like, disconnect your monitors. You have to disconnect your, uh, you have to disconnect your monitors, your keyboard and stuff. But if you have a wireless keyboard and you have a wall mount desk, you can just put the keyboard in the drawer of the keyboard tray or, you know, just keep it in the keyboard tray and then, you know, unhook your monitors from the back of your CPU, take it outside. I do recommend this. Take your CPU outside because, you know, you don't want dust particles you don't want dust particles in your house, um, or your office, or wherever you work at, you know? Like, okay, some people, some people, this is, this is a really cool thing. So, if you guys haven't heard of this YouTube channel, of this YouTuber, she goes by the name of Noisy Butters, and, um, she's, okay, she's actually one of my favorite YouTubers, by the way. Um, I've been subscribed to her for years, but apparently I forgot that I subscribed to her. Yeah, it's, it's that bad. I subscribed to her several years ago. Um, but I don't remember subscribing to her, and I literally just, like, binge-watched her videos and stuff, and stuff, you know. To learn about, like, PCs and, to learn about, like, PCs and things. And so, okay, there's, like, a bunch, there's a bunch of stores, right? There's a bunch of, like computer related tech stores and stuff um like there's you know best buy do i recommend getting a computer from best buy no i do not um i don't i got a computer from best buy i had it for 13 years it was slow like it was just naturally slow it was it was bad it was like one of those windows xp versions yeah yeah, it was, it was that bad. Um, I have no words. Um, it was that bad. It was slow. It was, it was really bad. If I ran The Sims 4 and The Sims 3 on it, it would literally break my computer. So, yeah, that's, yeah, I do not recommend Windows XPs. Um, I don't even think it was that good in 2006 when I ended up getting it, and it's like, 15 years old now. Um, I don't remember when it came out, but it, it, it was bad. It was bad, y'all. Um, so I do not recommend Windows XP. If you're still running Windows XP on a, like, brand new computer, update it right now to Windows 10, at least. Um, I actually have, uh, I actually got a computer with Windows 10 Home pre-installed on the computer. Oh, by the way, Dell is also a really good company to get your computers from. Um, do I recommend Dell? Yes, I do. Um, Dell is actually a really, really good company. Um, I, okay, I had to do a ton of research. I'm not kidding you. I had to do a ton of research. 
um, to learn about, like, where to get your, to where to get your, like, PC from, or should you build, or, you know, should you build your own desktop PC? You can if you're experienced, but I'm not experienced in that, um, Trust me, I am not, like, with how techy I am, I am not experienced in building PCs. I have no experience in that. Would I like to learn? Of course I would. But I am not experienced in that. Um, but, like, you know, will I help with, obviously, like, installing RAM and stuff, you know, if I needed extra RAM or something like that? Of course, I would, you know, find a YouTube tutorial on YouTube you know, have one of my parents help me until I get good, until I get good at it. Um, you know, obviously, but I watch, I've watched, like, so many computer-related channels and, like, tech channels, like, Linus Tech Tips and Noisy Butters. I mean, she's a gaming channel, but she also, like, you know, builds PCs and stuff. I think she's built, like, I think she's built I don't know, three PCs, um, and she's had a, uh, and she's had a job at Fry's before. If you guys don't know what Fry's is, um, no, I'm not talking about the food. I'm talking about an electronic store by the name of Fry's. Um, it's like, it's a little bit of a drive from where I live, but they have a Fry's where I live, um, so I'm gonna look up Fry's, okay, if you guys, if you guys don't know what Fry's is, it is an electronic, it is an electronic store, um, they have it in, they have it, yeah, they have it in California, um, yeah, they have it in the state I am from, so if you're like, you know, from California, they do have it in California, just not everywhere in California, um, but yeah, they do have it where I live, so. Um, let me just show you if you're like, you know, if you need like, you know, a good computer store and you don't know where to go, um, and you don't, you know, and you don't want to go to Best Buy. Like, this is for the people that, like, don't want to go to Best Buy. You don't have to go to Best Buy if you don't want to, but I'm just saying. Um, like, there are better electronic stores out there. So, yeah, there is this store called, Fr there is this store called Fry's Electronics. It's, like, in several places. Well, it's in several different states. I don't think it's in every single state. Um, it was founded in California. Um, but yeah, so... They have it, like, a ton of different places. They have it in, like, a ton of different states. So, you know, here's the website. They have, like, a ton of, like, techie stuff. Like, I mean, they have, like, walkie-talkies. They have computers. They have, ta you know, they have tablets. It's not just a computer store. It's, like, a full-on electronic store dedicated to electronic devices. <laughs> Including bikes and scooters, like, you know, electronic motor vehicles, um, and all that. So, let's go to the, let's go to computer components. So, if you guys are wanting to, you know, get computer stuff, this is where you go. So, they have a computer case. Okay, if you guys are wondering, the computer case is where all the parts go. And then these are, like, all the different parts. So, here's, like, here's, um, tough RAM. An RGB fan. Um, a memory card. the hard drive, um, and everything. I mean, you'd obviously want to have, um, you'd obviously want to have experience 
in building PCs before you do this because you don't want to ruin, you don't want to ruin your motherboard, you don't want to ruin, like, anything like that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, like, a ton of wires you have to hook up and everything, and, you know, like, cable management, it's a whole ordeal. Um, so... If you're not experienced in if you're not experienced in building PCs or learning how to or learning how to install RAM or RGB fans or something like that, get somebody who can help you. And I would suggest watching a ton of computer tech related videos related to that because it will really help you. Like, if you if you use your resources wisely, like how... Obviously, I've been watching, like, a ton of computer-related videos. Like, not just, like, OS videos or, like, how to use an operating system. I mean, I know how to use Windows, but it's been, it's been years since I've had one. Um, but I'm just saying, like, if you ever, you know, need to upgrade parts or something, I would suggest watching videos on that. Um, like, you know, how to build PCs and stuff like that. Because, because when you first, because when you first are upgrading parts for your computer, you probably have no idea what you're doing. Um, so yeah, it's very... It can be very intimidating, but you will get used to it. Um, and I would also suggest getting, like, anti-static everything. Um, like, anti-static gloves. Um, anti-static clothing, meaning um, something to go over your clothes so that you don't get static shock or static electricity everywhere. Um, and uh, static and anti-static cloths. Um, you really want anti-static cloths. And just, like, cleaning supplies and everything. Because, as I said, there's a lot of issues that can arise when you're, um, upgrading your PC parts or building a PC. But, yeah, you want to upgrade stuff. Um, constantly, and you need to learn how to do it efficiently and effectively and the right way. So, yeah. Uh, you know, um, obviously, keep your PC case off the floor. I've said this once, I will say it a million times. Keep it off the floor. Um, get a wall mount, put it under your desk. This is best for uh, gosh, this is best for if you have a wall-mounted desk. You can just put the wall mount under the desk and wall mount it. And then it holds your PC case. Um, so that way, it, there's a less amount of, there's less amount of dust. Um... And then when you and then when you want to clean it, you just you know unhook everything. You don't unhook everything from inside yet. You know you wait until you're you wait until you're like in a space where you have somebody help you, obviously. And then you have to like take out the filters because I mean there's a there's a ton of filters on a piece. There's a ton of filters on the inside. Um, of a PC case, um, that dust could get trapped under, they, it can get trapped under the fans, uh, or in the fans, it could get trapped in the fans, um, it can get trapped in the filters, I mean, you want to have good filters, too, um, which is very important, so, yeah, you know, keep it off the floor to minimize dust. I mean, you're still going to get dust regardless, but you want to... I would recommend that you clean it once a month. Um, like, you thoroughly uh, have time for maintenance. 
you know, you have, you have time for maintenance and you have time to thoroughly clean it and obviously have all the supplies. <laughs> and I would recommend that you wear anti-static gloves as well. Um, or that you invest in like anti-static stuff because you want to have anti-static, you want to have anti-static, uh, cloths, anti-static gloves, anti-static, just anti-static everything. And then, like, if someone's helping you, if someone's helping you clean the case, I would recommend that you take the time to clean off your monitors, clean off, you know, clean off your monitors, clean off your keyboard, um, and everything, because those parts of your computer need cleaning as well. They can't just go without being cleaned. Um, do I, do I also recommend eating at your desk? No, I don't. Um... I do not recommend eating at your computer desk. If you want to keep it as clean as possible, don't eat at your computer desk, please. Um, I'm literally probably never going to do that, ever. Um, you know, because there are proper places to eat food. Um, and everything. So, yeah, don't... Yeah, don't put your, or don't eat food at your computer. I mean, yeah, some people forget, but, like, don't eat food at your computer. Like, if you have some place to sit and eat, um, like, I don't know, on your bed, do I recommend doing this for, like, actual meals? No. Don't do this for actual meals. Take, like, a little, take a tray in your room or something if you you know spend a lot of time in your room take a tray in your room and eat that way or eat in your dining room or your living room I mean I eat in my living room it's fine and sometimes I eat in my room but I always pick up after myself afterwards so it's fine um You know, and I, like, throw my stuff away, so it's fine. And I would never, ever eat at my desk. Um, I wouldn't eat ice cream at my desk either because, obviously, you know, you, you can't have water by your computer. You can't have water by your computer because that is dangerous. PCs and water, PCs and moisture do not mix very well. Oh, and you also want to invest in thermal paste. What is thermal paste? Well, thermal paste Let me let me look this up. Thermal paste is Yes, and you also want several things of thermal paste. Now, what is thermal paste and what is it used for, you may ask? Oops. Okay, hang on. Okay, what is thermal paste and what is it used for? Well... Thermal paste is well, thermal paste is used. Okay, so thermal paste is used to apply a processor before installing a cooling solution. And it allows for an efficient transfer of heat from the IHS of the processor to the base plate or water block of the CPU cooler. Um, okay. There's a ton of different, like, CPU coolers. There's, like, water-based and a ton of other CPU coolers. Um. From the IHS of the processor to the base plate or water block of the CPU cooler. Um. That is designed to dissipate that heat. Um, 
no, you cannot use toothpaste as a No, you probably should not use toothpaste as a thermal, you know, as a thermal paste because toothpaste is not meant for that stuff. If you want, if you want a thermal paste, actually go out and get one. You can get them from several different places like Best Buy or Office Depot or Office Max or, um... You know, any place that sells office supplies. You probably wouldn't want to use toothpaste as a means of thermal paste because that is not what it's used for. It is meant for your teeth. Um, you know, it's meant for your teeth. So yeah, thermal paste, um... You know, you want to have, like, all your components stored in a safe place. Oops. Sorry. You want to have all your components stored in a safe place. Um, now, do I have, like, an extra little mini closet? I wish I did. But I don't. It would be so helpful. So, like, if you have, like, a little... If you have an office space with... With a little like closet then use that for your then um kind of revamp it if you would like you don't have to but i would recommend that you probably should for like you know shelf space and everything and put all your pc components and then put all your like pc components in there um and like you know Put all your parts for upgrades in there and things like that. And if you need to replace things, um, put put that in there. And then if you have like a separate laptop for travel or something, um, you know, put that in there as well. Um, I'd recommend getting a laptop that doesn't need to be charged. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's just me. Um, maybe it's just me because I don't like plugging my computer in all the time. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different, like, tips. There's a lot of different tips. There's tips for when you're, uh, you know, for, like, mm, for data and stuff. Um, like clearing out your cache, you know, clearing out your cache files, um, you know, organizing your folders, just probably, you know, getting a hang of the system. And everything, it's, it's complicated, but you'll get the hang of it. So don't worry. I'm sorry, I'm tired. I should have thought about this before I started filming. Um, luckily, this is not going up today. This is going up tomorrow. Because I just don't really want to work today. Um, but I'm filming this anyways. I'm just tired. So, yeah, there's a lot of different... Tips and tricks for PCs. Um, I mean, you know, you can control the fans. With laptops, you can't really do that. I know with Macs, you can't. Um, Mac fans are just obnoxiously loud. Uh, it's really annoying. One of the reasons why I do not like Macintoshes. Uh, there's a lot of other reasons I'm not going to get into that because I've already explained and I don't want to explain anymore. But yeah, um, you can control the fans, you know, the CPU temp, um, and everything. It's, it's going to be really nice to have like a central workspace to where 
I don't have to look at one screen. You know, like, you know, I don't have to, like, work on my bed anymore. Because sitting on your bed for so long is so uncomfortable. Let me just say that from somebody who sits on their bed all the time. I mean, I, I work on my bed. I sleep in my bed. I watch TV on my bed. Like, I watch TV on my bed. I work from my bed. And I sleep in my bed. And sometimes I eat snacks in here. Um, but yeah, um, being on your bed for long periods of time is not good for you. You need to like, you know, get up. I mean, even if you're sitting at a computer desk chair, you obviously want to get up and walk around and stuff. I mean, I'm just, I'm not in the mood to walk around right now because I'm kind of in pain, but I'm fine. So, yeah, I mean, there's obviously, like, tips and tricks when you actually get into the operating system. And the, go and the good thing about Microsoft is Microsoft comes with a ton of different things. Like, for example, uh, Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, Microsoft Outlook. Uh, probably going to look up all the Microsoft apps. Um... I mean, not every not every app someone uses is powered by Microsoft. Like, okay, there's this one app. There's this Notion app um, that I actually started using, and it's it's really cool. I haven't I haven't filled it up yet because I don't have all of my videos planned out. I don't really plan out my videos. I should. But I kind of don't know what I film until I film it, really. So, yeah, there's the Notion app. Um, it's a really good app, by the way. I recommend that you download it. Um, it helps you stay organized. You can put links, um, you know, it helps you stay organized. You can put links to things. You could organize things. I also have it on my laptop as well. Um, so yeah, you can get Notion for Windows. You can get a lot of, you can get a lot of things for Windows, actually. Like, you can get iTunes for Windows. I know, right? You can get iTunes for Windows. It's crazy, but you can. You can get iTunes for Windows, and and for all my podcasters out there that are thinking, oh, how am I gonna upload my podcast to my, you know, to like Apple Podcasts and Spotify? Just go to, you know, just go to your podcast distributor after filming your podcast episode. And upload it like normal. And then it distributes it for you. At least I know my distributor does that. Because I use Anchor for my podcast. And it distributes everything for me. So that's really that's a really good thing. So yeah, that's how... I mean, you can bypass a lot of other things. But... I'd recommend... Like, you can... Bath, you can... um. Bypass things like updates for Windows, but I'd recommend that you update. Um, I'd recommend that you do update and probably do something else while your computer updates. Like if I, if I ever decided to update my computer and if I was tired or something like I am now, then I'd probably sleep through an update and just let my computer update. And then turn it off once it's finished. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you need more memory, 
you're going to need more memory or you're going to have to like clear or you're going to have to clear out some things um, if you run out of space. Now, a lot of people are probably wondering, you know, why do you always upgrade your computer when your stuff is slow? Well, you probably don't know how to clear out your files correctly. There's a lot of different ways to clear out your files, like um, putting temp in the search bar, um, you know, of your of your files to clear stuff out that you don't need. You don't you don't delete every file, but there are certain files that you do delete off your computer. Um, and also delete apps that you do not use anymore, like, you know, apps that are outdated or apps that you literally do not use anymore. Um, I mean, some apps are installed with the, com with the computer, like, uh, Xbox, you know, the Xbox app, because Microsoft owns Xbox. <laughs> Microsoft is the creator of Xbox, just like how Sony is the creator of the PlayStation. Um, or like every PlayStation related console, like, you know, the PSP, every single PlayStation ever made, um, and everything, and how Microsoft has owned Xbox since, I don't know, how long? Has it been 2001, I think? Or 2000 or something like that? They've... I mean, Xbox is old. Xbox has been around for a long time. Xbox is, is a really, really successful company. Now, do I want an Xbox after so long? No. Would I like one? Sure, if I had the space for it, but I don't. So, yeah, I'm not going to invest in an Xbox. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> Because I don't have the space. And you need space for, like, all the consoles. And everything. And I have multiple different consoles. I have handheld consoles. And I have actual home consoles. Like a Wii and some DS's. For example. And I haven't upgraded my console sets. Because my consoles work fine. So... Yeah, but for the Xbox app to actually work, you actually need your Xbox turned on and everything. It's it's not going to work if you don't have it on. Um, or it's not going to fully work unless you have it on all the way. So, yeah, I recommend doing that. So, I mean, you know, take the installed apps to your advantage. If you have, if you have too many apps on your desktop PC then I would recommend deleting them. Um, then, you know, I would recommend deleting them if you don't need them anymore. Like, obviously, if you do not need them, don't... Don't download them because, you know, you go into that download rabbit hole of finding all these cool apps to download... And you find out that you don't need them anymore at some point. Now, do would I use, like, music players? Obviously, of course I would, you know? Like, obviously the only play, the only music player I use is Spotify, really. I mean, I use Pandora, but not as often as I use Spotify. I mean, I listen to podcasts on Spotify. I listen to, um, you know, I listen to my podcasts on Spotify, I listen to my music on Spotify, um, you know, and everything like that. So, I use Spotify for pretty much everything, um, you know, and my show is on Spotify as well. I mean, it's on Apple Podcasts and Radio Public and, you know, all those other places and you know overcast all those other podcasting platforms but a lot of people 
that know of my podcast find it from Spotify and then realize, oh, I have it on other platforms as well. So yeah, I have, let's see. So yeah, I have my apps and my social media tab. Yeah, I have it on Overcast and Anchor and it's on Google Podcasts. Um, do I use Google Podcasts? Not really. I downloaded it once, but I don't actually use it. Um, in Radio Public, you need a, you need an account to, like, log in and everything. Or, you know, to sign up and log in. Or, obviously, get your RSS feed. And claim it. So, yeah, that's what you have to do. So, yeah, I have it on Overcast as well. If you guys don't use, like, let's say... If you don't use Apple Podcast, I'm so sorry. I'm so tired. If you guys don't use Apple Podcasts to listen to podcasts, I also have my podcast on uh, gosh, on Overcast. So yeah, I've been, let's see, hang on, how many months have I been doing this? September 6th, and it's past September 6th, it's November 15th, so let's see, September, October, November, so yeah, I've been doing this podcast for three months, it's crazy to think that, (laughs) um, that I've been doing this for three months, but I've kind of gotten the hang of it. It's kind of it's kind of easy, so yeah. Um, you know, if you run out of space, obviously you can upgrade, or you know, yeah, upgrade your equipment. Well, not your, not your equipment, but like your uh, internal stuff. Um, like you know, upgrade your storage and everything for your PC and everything, but to limit your, to, um, clear your storage, you do, you can do a ton of different things so that you don't have to buy extra RAM. Do I recommend getting extra RAM? Yes. Um, you never know when you need a RAM stick. Sometimes RAM sticks don't always work how they're supposed to, so, like, you have to remove a RAM stick and turn your computer on and put it back in um I know some people some people have like faulty RAM where you put in your RAM stick and where you know you put in your RAM stick and your computer doesn't turn on and then you take out the faulty RAM stick and it turns on fine and you put it back in that's kind of how you do it but you have to align it properly um so yeah obviously like clear your cache files clear clear a lot of stuff there there are some files you do not want to delete and if you have certain games like the sims one or well it depends because the sims one is not sold in stores anymore Um, that game is, like, 20 years old. Well, the franchise is 20 years old. But if you have games that take up a lot of space and you don't play them... Okay, if you don't play certain games anymore that take up a lot of space, um, go to your Origin or wherever you downloaded your games from and uninstall them. 
Now, you can reinstall them whenever you want to. But like for me, because I have pretty much every single one of my games on Origin already bought and everything. Like, you know, because I own, because I own them. You don't have to like get your expansion packs. Uh, you don't have to like get every single one of your expansion packs. Um and everything, but The Sims 4 and The Sims 3 take up a lot of space. Let me let me just say that right now. Sims 3 and 4 take up a lot of space. Um, let me just tell you that because, I mean, I don't have every expansion pack. Um, I actually don't have any of the stuff packs for The Sims 3. I literally just have expansion packs for The Sims 3. I don't have any stuff packs whatsoever. I just have expansion packs and custom content. But let me just tell you from being a Mac user for so long, the Sims 3 takes up a lot of storage on your computer. And you need to be ready for that type of commitment. So Obviously, as I've said, Macs aren't meant to, uh, Macs aren't meant for games like that, because, you know, there's, like, 12 to 13, well, no, there's 11 expansion packs, I think, or 12 for The Sims 3, and it takes a lot of space. Now, I haven't had any issues like that for The Sims 4. Because I don't have every expansion pack for The Sims 4 either, but I have the majority of them. Um, and obviously, since I already own the expansions, um, I mean, some of them are disc version, others are digital. Um, the ones that I have are both. Some of them are the digital version. Others are not. Um, now, for PC, you have to have the disc. That's kind of how it works. Even though Origin is going all digital. For PC, you still need the disc for it to work. Um, or else it will not. I know that from experience because I used to play disc game. I used to play um, CD-ROM games. Now, okay, I have no idea what ROM stands for. I need to look that up. I have never known what ROM stands for. Ever. I mean, I've seen CD and DVD ROM, but I don't know what ROM stands for. ROM. No, not rom-coms. I meant, like, rom CD definition. Oh, so that's what CD-ROM is. So, CD-ROMs, I mean, you obviously want, um, okay, I'd recommend that you get a disk drive, um, you know, a thing with a disk drive that's for CD, DVD, and Blu-ray ROM. Because if you want to, let's say, if you want to burn CDs or, you know. Now, I don't, like, burn CDs all that often. Um, I only did it a couple times, and I didn't actually do it because I don't know how to burn CDs. Um, I mean, you can burn CDs, but... Um, I don't know how to do that, but there is, there are optical drives for CD, DVD, and 
Blu-ray ROM. So if you guys don't know what Blu-ray is, um, Blu-ray is a... So you know how DVDs have like red rays or whatever? Um, Blu-rays have blue disc rays instead of... Okay, basically a ray is what... Blu-ray players or DVD players read when you install or when you insert like CDs or DVDs or something um, They read rays. That's how it works And seeing as I own a lot of Blu-ray discs, I own I own two Blu-ray related films well I own the Hunger Games. I own the Hunger Games series um, on Blu-ray and digital, and I own Tangled on Blu-ray. Okay, I own Tangled on Blu-ray. I own uh, Hunger Games on Blu-ray, and I own The Princess Bride on Blu-ray. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I own The Princess Bride on Blu-ray, but I don't know where it is, and I've never actually watched it on Blu-ray. Um, I mean, I have it somewhere. I don't know where it is. But I got it gifted. I got it gifted to me. And the thing, the thing is, I didn't have a Blu-ray player at the time, and now I do. I don't have it in my room. It's in my living room. But yeah, Blu-ray players are very, very important. Um, if you own Blu-ray discs. If you own Blu-ray discs, Blu-ray players are extremely important. And that goes for computer optical drives as well. Um, you would probably want a triple optical drive that plays, you know, that does CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, and Blu-ray. Um, Blu-ray, CD, and DVD ROM drive. PC. You know, that does all three. So... I mean, you can get, you can get, like, a ton of different, you can get, like, a ton of different drives. Like, you can get one that plugs in to the computer. And, I mean, this is good for computers that don't have, that don't have optical drives. I know that Macs don't. Macs do not have optical drives. They used to, but they don't anymore. Um, and then you know you can get you can get one from Best Buy that does all three. Blue and usually it says Blu-ray, CD, DVD, optical drives. Um. Now, would I need this for every single, would I need this for every single, um, DVD that I have? No, I wouldn't, but it would be, it would be good to have. Um, you know, let's say if the code expired for a, you know, for a Blu-ray pack or something like that. If it expired... For like a little, you know, for a Blu-ray set, then yeah, that would be good. I mean, you know, I still, I still utilize things like DVD players and, um, and things like that, you know, because I still watch DVDs, um, mainly because not every movie I have is digital, is, or is digitally compatible. Like, I have... I mean, I have a ton of I have a ton of films. 
and stuff. I have, like, you know, the Harry Potter, I have the Harry Potter film franchise, I have Hunger Games films, um, you know, I have the Hunger Games films on Blu-ray, um, and digital, and I actually watch my Hunger Games movies from Google Play. I installed them. It's actually extremely easy to um, install them. You just go to a site. You just go to a specific site and you and you install it. It's very very easy. I learned how to do that on my. I learned how to do that by myself. Like I literally did that the first the first day I got it. And then for other DVDs that I had that also were digitally compatible, I did that with those as well. Um, but I did that later on because I kept forgetting about it. But yeah, do I recommend? Do I recommend um, having computers with CD, DVD, and Blu-ray ROM? Yes, I do, because you never know when your DVD player is going to stop working, or when you don't want to watch, you know, when you don't want to watch um, DVDs on the DVD player, you don't have to. Um, I actually used to watch DVDs on a computer. So, if you got like Blu-ray drives, they are actually compatible. With both CDs and DVDs. Um, you know, just like, just like any Blu-ray player. Like, I mean, not everyone has a Blu-ray player. But if they do, they don't have to invest in a DVD player because it's an everything player. Um, and if you have that for your computer, then that would be good for you as well um, to have. So, you know, obviously Macs do not have them. Macs do not have optical drives, so you'd have to buy one if you want to watch a movie on your laptop. Um, you know, and if it doesn't have digital, if it doesn't have Blu-ray disc and digital, then you're kind of out of luck. But you can get, you can get them from a lot of different places, like Asus and, or, well, Asus is a company, Asus is a brand, um, you know, it's either USB connected or it's already in there depending on what you have, so yeah. And a Blu-ray disc. And a Blu-ray. Disc is obviously, you know, blue. Yeah. So the thing about a Blu-ray disc that is different from an actual CD from an actual CD is that the color is blue, spelled B-L-U. Um, 
that the color of the disc is blue on the outside and you put it in a DVD player, I mean not a DVD player because they don't recognize, DVD players do not recognize Blu-ray discs, um, but you put it in a Blu-ray player and, you know, it reads it, and that's how you watch Blu-ray films or TV shows. Um, I mean, I've never seen a TV show Wait, a replacement for Blu-ray? Do you mean digital? Oh wait, this is old, like, honestly, this is old. This is an article, I'm reading an article from like 2015 or 2013. Um, a replacement for Blu-ray. Do they mean digital or something? Because digital is already a thing. Like, everything now... Everything now is digital. Pretty much everything. I mean, you have to be lucky enough to find actual DVDs nowadays. Because everything is digital. I remember I was watching um, the Twilight Saga. Or, not the... Yeah, the Twilight Film Saga. It's one of my favorites, actually. No, I've never read the books yet. I kind of watch the films before I read the books. I know I'm backwards. But they had it on Hulu for a while, and then they removed it. Um, which is sad, because I was, like, in the middle of watching one of the films, and I couldn't finish watching it kind of unfortunate but it's fine it's it's fine but I mean from the films that I have watched it's really good But yeah, you can do like a ton of different things with a PC, you know, obviously, obviously like watch movies on it, you can project it to your TV, um, actually use a projector, which I have a projector, but I haven't opened it yet, and I've had it, at, uh, they've had it for like a year, but I don't know how to set it up, um, <laughs> it's true, I, well, I, I haven't had it for a year yet. It'll be a year on Christmas, but I just haven't set it up yet. It's one of my, it's one of my probably most useful Christmas gifts, but I haven't set it up yet. So, you know, because I don't know how to do that. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with a PC. You can project it to your TV if you need an extra monitor, which is something that I'll do even though I'm getting, even though I have a computer with dual monitors. Um, with, you know, really good sized dual monitors. I'd probably get them on her arm too. Who knows, but I don't want to like clutter my space, if you know what I mean. If you have a small space, you want to keep it as tidy and uncluttered as possible. Um, but yeah, if you need a third monitor for a PC, use a smart TV. Preferably a Roku TV. Um, I mean, that's just my preference. I've used a Roku TV for, I think, this TV that I have is two years old or something. Um...
Yeah. I got it in 2018 or 2019, I believe. No, I got, I got it in 2018. Yeah. Christmas of 2018, I'm pretty sure. Um, I had a smart TV before the one that I currently have now, and it had so many problems because it was old and I just needed a new one. Let me tell you, I've went through so many televisions over the years. I mean, I've went through so many TVs and so many DVD players. Luckily, I haven't had to, like, upgrade my DVD player in X amount of years, and that's a really good thing. I can't remember how long I've had uh, my current DVD player for, but I've had it for quite some time. I haven't had to upgrade it, but the last DVD player I remember having was, like, one of those DVD players with, like, big lights on it. Okay, like, you know those buttons? You know those DVD players with, like, those huge buttons on them? Yeah, I had, I had one of those, and it, like, and it lit up. Like, I had, I think pretty much every single DVD player that I've ever had was gray. Um... Yeah, my first DVD player was gray, my second one was gray, and my third one is black. I'm pretty sure this is my third one, I can't remember, because I've only had like two DVD players from what I can remember. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I've had three DVD players, I haven't had to upgrade the one that I currently have now yet um am i you know am i keeping it yes i just have to like move it i just have to you know move it onto my shelf or i could use my computer whichever one i want to do first you know you know i have options i'd have options now i could use my computer or i could like you know i could use my computer or i could use my DVD player, I'd probably prefer a DVD player over using my computer, unless I'd really want to. Plus, half of the stuff that I watch is digital now. Like, you know, I watch Hulu or Netflix, and, uh, and I use Google Play a lot. Well, you know, I use Google Play movies and TV a lot. Um, to watch movies. Not for every, not for every movie that I ha own, really. Like, you know, I don't use it for Harry Potter and I don't use it for, like, American Horror Story. But, you know, if I want to watch American Horror Story, I would just watch it on Netflix. Um, you know, watch it on Netflix. Um... And then when it gets to season 8, I'll watch the DVD, obviously, because they removed season 8 and put season 9 on there. Doesn't really make sense. If you're going to remove the show, if you're going to remove a season, at least wait until the series is over first before you do that, Netflix. Cough, cough, I'm talking to you, Netflix. <laughs> you know... Netflix actually removed season 8 of AHS on Netflix, and it and season 9 wasn't even out yet. It was so annoying, but I'm like, you know, I have the full season on DVD, so it's fine. Luckily, I got that for Christmas, and I've never regretted it, because I love watching American Horror Story. The first time I watched it, I got hooked. I watched it on Netflix, by the way. There's a lot of shows that I actually watched on Netflix. Like, Pretty Little Liars. Do I want the DVD? Do I want, like, the full series of Pretty Little Liars on DVD? Yes, I do. I really do. I've been wanting the full series of PLL on DVD since it went off Netflix a couple of years ago. Um, but, you know, I used to watch it on Freeform as well, so, 
you know, when it was still on air. I didn't used to watch it. I didn't used to watch it when it first came out because I was like, it was 2010 when it came out. And I wasn't really old enough to watch it back then in 2010. I think I started watching it when, I think I started watching it when I was in high school, to be honest with you. There's a lot of shows I started watching when I was in high school. But yeah, there's so many things you can do with a PC you could watch. You know, you could watch shows on it, you could, you know, play your games, you can, you know, you can play your games on it, you can watch your movies on it, burn movies and DVDs on it, um, and everything. You can edit on your PC. Like, oh my gosh, you guys. I cannot wait for the day when I finally can get Adobe software. I'm not going to get it now because, you know, it costs money. Um, I mean, you can get, like, a student plan or a one-time payment thing. But I cannot wait to get, like, proper editing software. Um, you know, not just Photoshop, but, like, everything Adobe, really. Except for Flash Player, because I don't think you need Flash Player anymore. I'm actually going to look that up. Do you need Flash Player for Hulu? Because I don't think you need Flash Player for Hulu anymore, um, to be honest. Um, I don't really know, because they, ha they have it in an app now. Uh, do, I mean, back then you needed, do you need Flash Player, do you need Flash Player for Hulu? I mean, you don't need it for YouTube. Flash player for Hulu, and you don't, I don't think. You used to, but I don't think you do anymore. They actually have Hulu, they have the Hulu app on Mac now, which is really good. I mean, they have it for Netflix as well. But I'm just going to see. You know, never mind. You can just get the app or something. I think I still have it. I think I still have the Hulu app, but I don't. I mean, I watch Hulu on the TV a lot, but I don't necessarily have it on my Mac anymore. Let's see. But yeah, I don't think I don't think you really need it for Mac anymore. You used to need it, but I don't think you do because it's not really compatible with Mac anymore. It's weird. I don't know why it doesn't work for Mac anymore, but it just said, oh, you don't need it, or oh, this isn't compatible with Mac anymore, and it told me to uninstall it, so that's what I did. 
Mainly because I didn't need it. Mainly because I, well, I didn't use it. And it just kind of took it off Hulu. I mean, I, I go in between Netflix and Hulu all the time. It's fine. Like, it's perfectly, it's perfectly normal. Um... So yeah, I mean, you can get like streaming services for, you can get streaming services for Windows, you can, you know, watch DVDs on Windows, or, you know, PCs or whatever. It's not just Windows, but the majority of the home is Windows, I believe. Um, or that I'm familiar with, at least. So, yeah. With that said, I think that's gonna be pretty much it. I didn't really know what to talk about, necessarily, but those are just a couple of tips. <sighs> I'm so freaking tired right now. I wish I wasn't so tired, but I am. And it sucks. So, yeah, I'm probably gonna take a nap now. And I will upload this tomorrow because I am so tired. And I just don't want to upload anything today. Like, I mean, I don't want to film anything else today. I don't want to upload anything else today. So this is going up tomorrow. And goodbye, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and please subscribe to my channel on YouTube for more videos if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, and it's available on pretty much every single podcasting platform. And with that said, I'm going to go because I've been talking for an hour already. Felt like it went by so slow because I'm just so exhausted. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye guys.